Hi, this is Topology Review Part A, Simplicial Complexes Infiltrations. We'll call the Simplicial Complex X is a union of vertices, so X1 up to XK, edges E12, E13, faces F123, and tetrahedra T2379, so on. An alternate way to write it would be to use the sigma notation, so sigma 1 up to sigma k are the vertices, sigma 1, 2 is an edge, sigma 1, 2, 3 is a face, sigma 2, 3, 7, 9 is a tetrahedron, and so on. Okay, now that notation, if we have sigma i 0 up to i k, that means that's the convex hull of k plus 1 points, the points are the x0 up to xk, and they are in general position. We had two rules for simplicial complex. The first says that if we have a simplex in the complex, so here in sigma notation, then all of its faces are also included in X. For example, if we take the face F125, if that's an X, then we have to have the vertices X1, X2, X5 in X, as well as the edges E12, E15, and E25. That's the first rule. Second rule says that if we intersect two of the simplices, so here there's a face, F123, a tetrahedron, T1379, their intersection E13, that has to be in the complex as well. So we have these two simple rules, and at times we want to make sure we enforce these rules uh, in order to proceed. Let's move on to the next slide. And here we see an example. So this is just an example from lab one. We started with a solid cube that's not a simplicial complex. We haven't, haven't partitioned into vertices, edges, and triangular faces and tetrahedra. However, we can construct in red a tetrahedron. So the, there are, it has four vertices, which are vertices of the cube. You can see how they're opposite each other. Okay. We connect those by edges, and then we put in the faces. So this is a regular tetrahedron. It has symmetry around any of the vertices or around any edge. Okay. And if we look at the complement of the red tetrahedron in the cubes, so here's one of the complementary portions of it. That is itself a tetrahedron. It's not regular, though, because you can see the angle in the corner is a right angle. Okay. Anyway, we get four of those tetrahedra in black, one in red, that gives us five tetrahedra, we've turned the cube into a simplicial complex. Okay, It has no interesting features at the moment, at least topological features. Geometrically, this might be interesting, though. OK, let's move on to the next slide for other examples. Then we had handout five. This example. Uh, consists of a triangle, so three vertices and three edges, that's x. We added a two simplex to it, that's y, and then we added two edges to get w. x is connected, it has one tunnel, the tunnel is the hole through the middle, uh, you can imagine flying through the inside of the triangle. Okay, on the other hand, we look at y, y we've added the two simplex in the middle, it's no longer connected because we have the outer triangle, and we have the two simplex in the middle. There's no edge connecting those. We still have a single tunnel. There's the tunnel through the original triangle. That's not changed by the presence of the inner triangle. In fact, the inner triangle could have been moved anywhere and it would have the same structure. Let's go to W though, this is different. We've added two edges, we can see, that creates this trapezoid down at the bottom. This is now connected. But adding those two edges also had another effect. It created a second tunnel. So here we see two tunnels through the simplicial complex. And the number of connected components and the number of tunnels will be topological features that we'll focus on later, but we'll do it algebraically with chains and cycles and homology. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. This is from homework five, which you just handed in. It's a little more involved example. Here we have x on the left, it's hollow. We have two tetrahedra, one on top, one on bottom. They're glued together along a common face. So we have seven faces, it's hollow. 
There are no tunnels through it, and but it has two enclosed cavities or voids. These are the interiors of the tetrahedra on the top and the bottom. That was problem for problem two on homework five. For problem three, we started with X, but we removed three of the faces. So F123, F124, and F235. Here those faces are colored, so or the outline of them is colored. So you see F123 in the back. I'm sorry, in the front, that's blue. F124 in the back, that's green. F235 in the front, that's yellow. Those faces are now missing. They're not there. That changes the topological features of this object. First, in the top half, by removing two faces, we create a tunnel. And you can see this uh, by thinking about the edge X12, which remains. That's something like a handle. You could wrap your fingers right through the, right through the object, grab onto the handle, and pick it up. Okay. Now, the bottom, though, we only removed a single face. So there's no edge there, no handle to grab, so no tunnel in the bottom. Uh, on the other hand, we did puncture the void that was there. So what we're left with is a simplicial complex with one tunnel and no voids. So you can see by removing simplices, depending on how they're removed, we can create features in different dimensions. Okay, let's go on to filtrations. We said a filtration was a way to construct a simplicial complex in steps. Each of the steps, so here x1, x2, x3, xn, these are all simplicial complexes in their own right. Okay? This, since they're contained in x, we call them subcomplexes. And remember, it's important to think because they're some subcomplexes, they're made of simplices. So for example, if we have a k simplex, so here it's called sigma i0 up to ik, that's an element of Xi. Remember, Xi is just a list of the simplices. Then that same simplex is contained in Xi plus one. So we think of these as being containment as we're building them up. A different way to think about it, though, is that we have, instead of containment, an equivalent version would be that we have inclusion functions. So we have complexes Xi, Xi plus one. And what we have is from Xi to Xi plus one here is a function. It's not a very interesting function. All it does is take a simplex from Xi and map it into Xi plus one to itself. However, this is a useful way to think when we get to homology of, of filtrations. All right, so that's the definition. Let's look at some examples. Here's the first example. We might think of it as a construction example where we get to choose what's being constructed. The simplex so the simplicial complex X is on the right. That's made of vertices, edges, and faces. It's two-dimensional. Let's start uh, at the square in the middle. That gives us our X1. To that X1, we add an X2. We add a two simplex to get X2. Notice that two simplex has vertices and edges. They have to be included as well. So the complex X2 contains one more vertex, two more edges, and one face that are not in X1. Similarly, when we go to X3, we add two more, two simplices, same idea. We add two more vertices, four more edges, and two more faces to get X3 from X2. Then we go to X4. We add the fourth of these two simplices. That means we add one more, one more vertex. Pause for a second and catch up. One more vertex and a, and a two-dimensional face to go with it. And lastly, we add the four triangular edges. All right, that gives us X5. And finally, we fill in with the red two simplices to get the full complex. So as we go from X1 to X2 to X3, we're adding simplices. Uh, and we're not adding them in any particular dimension. We might add vertices, we might add edges, we might add faces. The only rule is that when we add a face, we would have to add all its vertices and all its edges. Similarly, if we added a tetrahedron, which we did not do here, we would add its fa triangular faces, its edges, and its vertices. So this is a construction that's somewhat arbitrary. Right? A different way to do this, 
would be to look at the skeleton. <coughs> Excuse me. So you recall the skeleton are dimension zero. So that's just vertices you see on the left. Vertices plus edges, that's x1, the one skeleton. And x2 is the complex on the right. So at each stage, we're simply adding all the simplices of a given dimension to what we had previously. And finally, we get the whole complex. We want to think of these as lists of simplices. We see x0 consists of x1 up to x8. x1 consists of x0, the vertices, then the edges. x2 consists of x1, so vertices and edges, plus the faces. And in the end, we wind up with x2, which is the complex x. Okay. This is not an arbitrary construction. This will come up at different times when it's useful for thinking about the structures we get by adding different numbers of simplices or simplices of different dimensions. So for example, in X0, we see connected components. We see connected components. Here we see single connected component, but we've built tunnels in X1. In X2, we filled in some of those tunnels. Okay, let's go to the last slide. This is the construction we're going to be using most often. This is the RIPS construction. This is based on having points in a metric space. Most of the time, it will be a copy of Euclidean space for us. That means we have pairwise distances between any two points, and we know those distances. Often, the points we're going to use are sampled from a much larger data set. But for now, let's think of this as all we have. So we're going to put include edges in the complex, and then triangles. No triangles are shown here, but we include edges if the distance parameter we use, the radius, is sufficiently large. So let's start here with R1 very small on the left, upper left. Here the, the parameter R1 is so small that the distance between any pair of points is bigger than 2R1, so we don't include an edge. There are no two disks which intersect. We go to R2, which is larger. Here R2 is chosen so that it's less than two times the D is less than 2R2 for some of the distances between points. So we see on the left, we see two places where we have intersecting disks. We create an edge there. Okay, so going from the first complex at radius R1 to the second at radius R2, we go from having seven connected components down to having five connected components. So we've changed the topological feature. Now if we move to R3, R3 is bigger than R2, and what we see on the right is that we've picked up another edge because these two points are closer together than 2R3. What happens? We see the connected components drop to 4 in number. Lastly here we see R4, which is greater than R3. We see now two connected components from adding two more edges. Now one thing that can happen, you see, is if we were to continue, we might again fill in the bottom. We might fill in the top, and we might get an edge path inside this complex. So this would be a topological feature that would be created, and we could continue in this way. So we're going to be using RIPS complexes uh, frequently from now on. We won't be doing them by hand. We'll be using software to do this, and that'll be the topic of a lab that's coming up. So that's the end of this uh, quick review. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Bye.